Oh, hi, hello. Welcome to a video about something that no one cares, but I do, so I wanna talk about it so more people start caring about it. Were you here in 2012 to like 2000 and I don't know, 15, when having a Tumblr account was an entire personality trait? Me too. You know, I really thought I did something and I really thought I was deep. I thought I was not like the other girls. We are here to talk about something that was a product of those times. I recently was cleaning out my closet and I found this, this relic of a book. Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. A poetry book, as I was sold. 14 year old me went into a store and paid $16 for this book because it said it was a poetry collection and I was scammed as many of us when we bought this book this is not a poetry collection babes let me tell you right now this is a collection of tumblr posts wattpad fan fiction excerpts and I don't know nonsense I was mad because I remember being so inspired by this book when I was younger. And as a 20-year-old, I was like, hmm, let me go back and revisit all those feelings. And I felt nothing. I feel betrayed and scammed. And I am here to talk about it. I have a lot of things to talk about it. Before anything else. Disclaimer. I don't like these things. And there are some things that I like. We'll get to that at some point in the video. That does not mean you need to dislike those things okay did you listen to me repeat it then thank you because we have different opinions and that is fine that is how the world works and if something i say i like you're like i hate that i think that's a not a good take fine that's okay and look i I am a big fan of poetry. Poetry is one of my favorite genres. I love poetry. This was a gateway for me. This is how I got into poetry because I started reading this and I started getting into it. And I'm not saying Rupi Kaur is not good. I'm just saying that this style of poetry is not for me. And I'm going to explain why here. And I think Rupi was very smart with what she did with this book because she really played all of us. Like, she really did something here. Ugh, this tea is terrible. Before any further ado, remember to subscribe to this amazing channel. Or not, it's fine. Let's start with the beginning. The foreword of this book. The foreword of this book is beautiful. I loved it. It was amazing to read. It talks about Rupi's heritage and her story and why she decided to write this poetry collection. It's really, really good. I, she talks about her family history and why she's translating feelings into poetry. I loved this foreword. It put me in a place where I was so excited to read the poems and I think that might have been my fall from heaven. And disclaimer, as well i only read this book by by ruby Kaur. i think she, this was her favorite book her first book she mentions this on the foreword so she might have you know changed her style and i might give it another <laughs> college try i'm gonna read it to you my favorite part of this of this foreword it's um it's here I write a poem about the 1984 genocide of the Sikhis in India. There is a line about the women who lived through it. Their resilience is breathtaking. They are the enduring survivors to the murders of their husbands and children. The, survivor, the survivors of betrayal, our word, <laughs> torture. I write that they come out of that terror as smooth as milk and as thick as honey. This is how the title Milk and Honey is born. I explore poetry deeper than I ever have. What was it that made these women into milk and honey? That smooth, that thick. Why is mama as resilient as she is? In exploring my own womanhood, I think about the pains that have affected those around me. This is amazing. Like, I want to read that poem. I want to read about these women that came out of these terrible situations, 
thick as milk and no thick <laughs> thick as honey and smooth as milk like i want to read this like i love this i think that this was why i hated it so much of this book because i was expecting something so different from it i think that putting herself they're putting her cultural background and her intentions with this book is pretty cool in my opinion because then i'm reading all these with you know a higher expectation and i am um disappointed <laughs> so yeah i really enjoy the foreword so i think <laughs> there are a few ways of describing some of these poems and the first way is tumblr posts first Tumblr post I found on this book is on page 12 and <laughs> I don't want to be mean I really don't I've had sex she said but I didn't know what making love feels like okay this doesn't this sound like a Tumblr post I have had sex but I never made love shut up <laughs> the next one is the idea that we are so capable of love but still choose to be toxic What's the idea now? Tell me. Go on. What? Well, that's what pissed me off. She does this thing where she just writes what she means instead of leaving it for us. And this repeats itself so much. It gets worse in some of them. But like the idea that we are so capable of love but still choose to be toxic. Yeah. Okay. And like doesn't this sound like a tumblr post like someone or a tweet that should have stayed in the drafts like i'm letting you decide what the idea is ma'am so this is so dumb <laughs> i'm sorry in page 25 she gives us this little like it's a bigger poem and i don't hate all of this poem there's actually two phrases in this poem that i really enjoy and i just wish that none of the rest of it was a thing let me read it for you Emptying out of my mother's belly was my first act of disappearance. Learning to shrink for a family who likes their daughters invisible was the second. The art of being empty is simple. Believe when they say you are nothing. Repeat it to yourself like a wish. I am nothing. I am nothing. I am nothing. So often, the only reason you know you're still alive is from the heaving of your chest. The art of being empty. And the phrase that I love from this poem is learning to shrink for a family who likes their daughters invisible. What a powerful thing to say, man. I didn't quite get the metaphor of like my first act of disappearance was coming out of my mother, was emptying out my mother's belly. But like you appear because you get to go, but like I guess you disappeared from her belly. I don't know. I don't really feel that much. But learning to shrink for a family who likes their daughters invisible man that is beautiful shit why didn't you just so many of these are two lines just leave the two lines that are good that i am nothing i am nothing i am nothing it's straight out of a tumblr and you explaining to us that this is about the art of being empty i already know you told me that in the middle of the fucking poem i don't like it she does the, the thing again about like describing to us what she's writing about so she goes i am ready for you i have always been ready for you and then she writes the first time <laughs> page 55 um she gifts us with this classic you might not have been my first love but you were the love that made all the other loves irrelevant thanks rupee you were so distant i forgot you were that at all okay this one is so fucking funny to me do you guys know who jack mate is you should if you don't go watch him he once made made a video about this zoella book that she wrote about like how to have a party and th they had a to-do list and like one of them was like invite people or and like count invitations or something well, there's a bit in here about birthday parties right and it says that <laughs> God, is this real? It says if you're throwing a birthday party but don't have enough time to send all the invites out, create an event on social media. Who would have thunk it? And it was so dumb. This is what this sounds like. So this one is what your 12-year-old cousin posted on her Tumblr about to-do list after the breakup. Number one, take refuge in your bed. Number two, cry cry till the tears stop this will take a few days three don't listen to slow songs 
Four, delete their number from your phone, even though it is memorized on your fingertips. Five, don't look at old photos. Six, find the closest ice cream shop and treat yourself to two scoops of mint chocolate ice cream. The mint will calm your heart. You deserve the chocolate. Buy new bed sheets. Collect all the gifts, t-shirts, and everything with their smell on it and drop it off at a donation center. Nine, plan a trip. 10, perfect the art of smiling and nodding when someone brings their name up in conversation. 11, start a new project. 12, whatever you do, do not call. 13, do not beg, do not beg for what does not want to stay. Do not beg for what is, okay, anyway. 14, stop crying at some point. <laughs> 15, allow yourself to feel foolish for believing you could have built the rest of your life in someone else's stomach. Stomach, you say? 16, breathe. Riveting stuff, babes, riveting stuff. And this last one I have for this part is... Again, another absolute classic of Tumblr. And it goes, my heart aches for sisters more than anything. It aches for women helping women, like flowers ache for spring. Now they're going into the second category of poem, the Wattpad fan fiction universe. Like most of these are straight out of from a One Direction fan fiction from 2012. And do not get me wrong, I love fan fiction. I am an avid fan fiction reader and there are some great fics out there 2012 fan fiction one direction we were all 12 so 12 year olds writing for 12 year olds didn't really you know cut it so you know the trope like uh, my mom sold me to one direction this is the type of trope we are in right now or like the interactive fan fictions with mac fly were you there i was were you i know you were I see you. This is the type of shit we're doing. In page 54, we have like just the most YN Harry Styles dialogue ever. And it, it reads, he asks me what I do. I tell him I work for a small company that makes packaging for, he stops me mid-sentence. No, no, what do you do to pay the bills? What drives you crazy? What keeps you up at night? I tell him, I write. He asks me to show him something. I take the tips of my fingers, place them inside his forearm, and graze them down his wrist. Goosebumps rise to the surface. I see his mouth clench, muscles tighten, his eyes pour into mine, as though I'm the reason for making them blink. I break gaze just as he inches towards me. I step back. So that's what you do? You commend attention? My cheeks flush as I smile shyly, confessing, I can't help it. Babe, babe, <laughs> this is not a problem. So these two Wattpad excerpts, they are side to side from each other. Can you see it? The light is really like, so these two. You talk too much, he whispers into my ear. I can think of better ways to use that mouth. The second one reads, it's your voice that undresses me. This is getting old. This next one is infuriating to me. This is not a poem. Poems can be big. Poems can be free, you know, free verse. Po it's very subjective. That's what I mean. Like a lot of things can be poems. But this is not a poem. This is filler. Someone told her we need more to two more pages. And they were, and she was like, another f more filler? I've filled this book with fillers, babe. You need more? And they were like, yes. So she wrote this. She ranted in two pages as if st straight out of what path in fiction she just you know those things you read like those inner thoughts you read in fan fiction that's what she did here and it shouldn't be in a poetry book so i'm just gonna put it in the screen and you can read it for yourself just like stop the video and read it it's bad i don't like it i think it, it falls flat in page 74 it's the argument you have with your mom about your boyfriend harry styles on the fan fiction and it reads when my mother says i deserve better I snap to your defense out of habit. He stills, he still loves me, I shout. 
She looks at me with defeated eyes, the way a parent looks at their child when they know this is the type of pain even they can fix, and says, it means nothing to me if he loves you, if he can't do a single wretched thing about it. I don't like it. Um, this one. Stay, I whispered, as you shut the door behind you. Harry, don't leave. Ah, so... Those are some fan fiction um, things for you to use in your next fic if you want. I uh, Send me the links. I'll read them. Next category I have is the category that I wrote down as she didn't write this. And I don't mean she didn't physically write this. Like she probably did. Like th this is her book. Like she wrote this. But these concepts are not new. These are not original concepts. And even though you can write about non-original concepts and still be good and still make them good when you just write the concept it doesn't make it good we know we know a lot of poems about hope but then emily dixon writes that hope is like a thing with feathers it's like we you elevate cliche concepts into poetry what rupee does is she gets the the concepts okay and she writes them down and that's it this one is every revolution starts and end with his lips that's a bikini kill song, repeat. You just made it straight. Like, this is, okay, like, uh, isn't there, like, there's absolutely something on top of, like, on her lips, I taste the revolution or something. Like, this is, I think people, most of the times, they try to diminish you for liking mainstream things, and I don't like that. The, my only problem with this book is that it just, it was sold as something that isn't, and I have a problem with it because I paid $16 for it. If it was free, it would be fine. If it's on Twitter, I don't care. But, like, you're charging me next one of our i don't want to be friends i want all of you more also could have been in a wapad from fiction also could have been a tumblr post but it didn't come up with it because it's probably is on tumblr already it's probably on a wapad from fiction as well so it's very dated and she just wrote it down tell me how you want to know this person more like what all like what is all what do you want to know why are you why are you friends like, you know what i mean like tell me i want to know let's keep going um on these last two it's funny so this one says it takes grace to remain kind in cruel situations does it cool thanks for telling me this one says fall in love with your solitude sure but you're just writing down like be in love with your own solitude like why should i i don't want to this next the next trope i want to go into for this book is the trope that she just writes the same poem over and over again in the span of like 10 pages like she wrote um, she was like i'm gonna write about this and then she wrote five poems and she chose one and then at the end of it the editing the editor was like oh no no you need more poems in this book so she just threw all of those in the book instead of just picking one. and i'm not talking about like you can't write two poems about the same topic it's the same thing like they have the same exact outcome message it's the same let me let me show you this one reads i didn't leave because i stopped loving you i left because the longer i stayed the less i loved myself the next page reads, you mustn't have to make them want you. They must want you themselves. <laughs> you must enter a relationship with yourself before anyone else. This is all it says. Losing you was the becoming of myself. How you love yourself is how to teach others to love you. I am learning how to love him by loving myself. If you are not enough for yourself, you will never be enough for someone else. You must want to spend the rest of your life with yourself first these are the same thing like you could have told me this is a single poem because they are literally about the same thing they have the same energy same message same you know outcome it's the same these ones are a little absurd to me in page 118 she writes people go but how they left always stays and page 135 which is not even a chapter over she writes the way they leave tells you everything. It's the same poem. Like It's like she wrote both and she chose one to put in. And the guys were like, no, you need more poems. So just fill them in. Oh my God. And then she has this triad of poems about body hair. 
And on, in page 157, she wrote, the next time he points out the hair on your legs is growing back. Remind that boy your body is not his home. He is a guest. Warn him to never outstep his welcome again. And then on a, page 168, which is in the same chapter, she writes, removing all the hair of your body is okay if that's what you want to do. Just as much as keeping all the hair on your body is okay if that's what you want to do. You belong only to yourself. And on page 185, which is also not even a chapter, it's in, this, it's in the same chapter, babes. She writes, hair, if it was not supposed to be there, would not be growing on our bodies in the first place. We are at war with what comes most naturally to us. And that phrase is good. We are at war with what comes most naturally to us. Delete the fir- the thing about the hair. Do that. Delete this first part and rewrite it. If it's about body hair, write about it. But like, write it. This is as if you're given a prompt and you're writing out the prompt. You know what I mean? Like, this first part sounds like a prompt. We'll talk about prompts more and i have been very negative so far and i know i have and i'm very sorry so something happened i was editing the video and turns out the entire rest of it was mute because this bitch stopped working so i am here two days later to re-record those parts that were mute should i re-record the entire video that would have been a little bit more professional but i am not professional i am practical and i do not want to film that all of that again we're just gonna pick it up from where we left off our beautiful rupee cower adventure let's go into the ones i like i do have i think 15 poems i really enjoy in this in this book out of 200 pages which is a concept I, I i think i'm gonna read all of them but if you don't see all 15s because it got too long and boring and you don't need to what i wanted to say before getting started with this part is that i one of this poems more than one like actually gets me emotional and i like them a lot and this is the proof that rupi kaur can write a good poem and she just decided to do a book of fillers with a few sprinkled in good poems trying to convince myself i am allowed to take up space it's like writing with my left hand when i was born to use my right the idea of shrinking is hereditary that brings this poem to a whole nother level if she had just left trying to convince myself i'm allowed to take up space like writing with my left hand when i was born to write with my left my, my right it's a it's a it's a, like a very shallow metaphor but when you add the idea of shrinking is hereditary and it brings us to that i think like the third poem we looked into that she talks about a family who likes their daughters and visible it, oh, it's it's a great concept i don't like these little titles that she puts in the bottom of most of these but this one i think it did change the poem a lot like most of these they don't change anything about the poem but this one did on page 26 she pays homage to this wasson shire or wasson shire on um, poem that's called inheritance i'm gonna put the original poem here um, and she pays homage to it and i'm gonna read that to you it is you look just like your mother i guess i do carry her tenderness well you both have the same eyes because we're both exhausted and the hands we share the same wilting fingers but that rage your mother doesn't wear that anger you're right that rage is the one thing i get from my father oh my god yay i think it's great i honestly think it's great next it's actually my favorite poem out of this entire book father you always call to say nothing in particular you ask what i'm doing or where i am and when the silence stretches like a lifetime between us i scramble to find questions to keep the conversation going what i long to say most is i understand this world broke you it has been hard on your feet. I don't blame you for not knowing how to remain soft with me. Sometimes I stay up thinking of all the places you were hurting, which you'll never care to mention. 
I come from the same aching blood, from the same bone, so desperate for attention, I collapse in on myself. I am your daughter. I know the small talk is the only way you know how to tell me you love me. Because it's the only way I know how to tell you. Yeah. Powerful shit. I like this a lot. And it made me very, very emotional. And it always makes me very emotional. Like the, the ending is my favorite. I come from the same aching blood, from the same bone, so desperate for attention. I collapse in on myself. I am your daughter. I know the small talk is the only way you know how to tell me you love me. Because it's the only way I know how to tell you not only because i relate to this i think this is powerful in itself like i really do think this this is a great poem the next poem i really like is one that is just two lines and i don't usually like the two lines poem on this book because i don't think they're poems but this one i kind of do i don't i don't think most of the times one-liners can convey a lot without sounding like a quote but this book does some does bring some of that and this is one of the examples for me and it reads i flinch when you touch me i fear it's him which is like kind of sounds like a wattpad from fiction but in the context of the book it works it's not deep or whatever like you understand what it is but at the same time she doesn't hold your hand like she i, I fear it's him like what in what way we're being touched in what way she's being touched what who she's talking about you know what i mean like she doesn't hold my hand like previously where she would just like said things this is like more of it, it's a little bit more open and i enjoy that so this one not the best but fine it always comes back to you it boils circles and itches its way back to you it's a simple concept but she elevated it because she left it open for us to understand I know you were talking about a lover or just like an abstract concept she expressed these emotions of boils and circles and itches these things that are like unpleasant back to this person as if like is this a positive thing is that a bad thing like it, you know what I mean like it's the way to take a simple idea and concept and elevate it um, the one in the next page is one that I think she makes use of the little title at the bottom quite well as well. So it is, Our Backs Tell Stories, No Books Have the Spine to Carry, Women of Color. So I do like the explanation because I think it fits well with the motif of the, of the book and that Rupi is a woman of color herself. So I think this fits very well, this little title at the, at the, at the end to who she's talking about i like the way that she talks about you no know, books have the spine to carry you know what i mean like the spine to carry like spine of a book and our spine i like that concept is a little you know i like the anecdote um in page 180 it's another one that is a two line and i just like the concept and the image of it and it goes the goddess between your legs makes mouths water i enjoy that yeah so those are all the poems i like <laughs> the next type of poem in this book we'll be talking about is the one that I've been mentioning for a while but I haven't touched on the subject itself it's the type of poems which are just prompts they are writing prompts you know when you like have an idea for something and then you write it down for later you can you know go through it and like think about it some of these just sound like that initial prompt and this happens so much in this book you have noticed right i have mentioned a few of the prompts here already but these ones specifically that i chose are even worse so page 20 rupee writes a daughter should not have to beg her father for a relationship yeah okay i get it i get the idea like i get where she was going but write about it tell tell me a daughter should not beg her father for a relationship true i relate some of you might as well but why don't you write about it doesn't it seem like she wrote this like i'm gonna write about how a daughter should not have to beg her father for a relationship and then she just left it instead of writing about it so this one <laughs> the abused and the abuser i have been both go on I think it's so shallow like this has such potential like she drew a coin toss relate to that in this one she writes accept yourself as you were designed okay i will thanks now i will this one is just pathetic i like the 
planet doodles because you know planets are fun you are your own soulmate and that's it <laughs> that's all that says Look, do you know like they sell these those these days like a hundred prompts for writing or a hundred prompts for drawing i think this would be a good one i call this part are you serious <laughs> Are you seriously charging people for this? This is what I call it. Everything else I have mentioned, even though absurd-ish, it's not too absurd. These next ones are absurd. This one. Do you remember that Stranger Things meme that was like, she was a poem, but he couldn't read? <laughs> that some people thought was like, wow, poetry. This is it. So it is. I am a museum full of art, but you had your eyes shut. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the poetry award goes to this one. It's the best poem in this entire book. This poem takes the cake, all of the cakes, multiple cakes. This one is, I was music but you had your ears cut off what what i was in music but you had your ears cut off what are you talking about like stranger things meme on crack this is insane he had his ears cut off no and this one it just it just reads if the hurt comes, so will the happiness. Be patient. Cancel therapy today. Our last bit of types of poems is the one that is just like, just at least few hypocritical poems because she talks about something like we've read ones that are like, my sisters, like I love sisterhood and women power. And then she goes on to trash talk women that are with her ex. And I'm like, suspicious. Let's read these two poems that contradict himself and are literally eight pages apart. Let's do it. So this is, the woman who comes after me will be a bootleg version of who I am. She will try to write, she'll, she'll try and write poems for you to erase the ones I've left memorized on your lips, but her lines can never punch you in the stomach the way mine did. She will then try to make love to your body, but she will never lick, caress, or suck like me. She will be a sad replacement of the woman you let slip. Nothing she does will excite you, and this will break her. When she's tired of falling apart for a man that doesn't give back what he takes, she will realize she will recognize me in your eyelids, staring at her with pity, and it will hit her. How can she love a man who is busy loving someone he can never get his hands again? Just absolutely trash talking this woman that she doesn't even know. Literally less than ten pages later, she writes this. If he can't help but degrade other women when they're not looking, if toxicity is the central to his language, he could hold you in his lap and be soft, honey. That man could feed you sugar and douse you in rose water, but that still could not make him sweet if you want to know what type of man he is. She just trash talk this woman for like being with her man. Like she called her a bootleg of herself. And then here she's like, if he is a douche, leave his ass. Like you are a douche i just wanted to say i believed in the potential of this book so deeply i think that everything in it could have been improved if it worked on i think maybe she had a deadline and she had to get to it she had a certain number of pages she had to reach that's why some of these are just filler and, and the book just feels not genuine but this but we can't have everything can we uh that's it I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this amazing channel. Um, and I will see you on the next one. Peace, love, and cucumber. What was that? What was... Okay.